Hallelujah. It's another time that uh, we are going to hear the word of God. And we have one of our own that God has prepared him for the word. Amen. May I ask Dr. Senga? He is a coordinator of student ministry in our church. a doctor by profession but a lecturer at Kampala um, International University. So the Lord has graced him for the today's message. Welcome, brother. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you add more claps to Jesus? Thank you very much, praise team. God bless you. Hallelujah. How many are happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Can you turn to your neighbor and tell neighbor, I didn't hear that. Can you tell, tell your neighbor, neighbor, are you ready for the word of God? Now you can shake him a little bit and tell him, neighbor, I'm prepared. Hallelujah. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. And I want to thank um, our senior pastor in his absence, Dr. Lucas Shalua, for approving that I should be standing here today, this morning, together with the pastoral team, our local church pastor, uh, Pastor Monsele, thank you very much, and Mama, our pastor, Pastor Nduye, uh, Pastor Bado, and all the pastors who are not here, thank you very much. Praise Jesus. So are we ready for the word of God this morning? Amen. So I want us to turn uh, on the book of Mark chapter 10. The book of Mark chapter 10. The book of Mark chapter 10. I'll be reading from verse 46 to verse 52. The book of Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to verse 52. The book of Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to verse 42. It says, and they came to Jericho and as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great crowd, but Timaeus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. And when he heard it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, call him. And they called the blind man. saying to him, take heart, get up, he is calling you. And throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, what do you, do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on the way. Shall we say amen to Jesus? I'm going to be sharing with you on the title, The Divine Favor, or The Favor of the Lord. The Divine Favor, or The Favor of the Lord.
You know, life is hard. If you find someone who is telling you life is easy, that person is not being honest to you. And probably he's not being honest to himself as well. Because life is not always a straight line. Life is made up of waves. Life is not easy all the time. So many are happening in life. Problems are coming. And sometimes, or we can say the problem of problems is they don't need invitation. They just come uninvited. You cannot invite problems to your life. You can be just seated there, enjoying your life, having your good time. Let's say for ladies, you are going to KFC, having your good time, eating those chicken wings and ice cream with your makeup on, and then you hear a phone call from one of your aunts saying, hey, your cousin has swallowed something here. We need some money to send him to the hospital. Because life is not always a straight line. Life has waves, waves of ups and down. And you know, sometimes you can also be sitting somewhere having your good time, just relaxing, at peace, calm, and just somebody comes and provokes you, just for no reasons. Someone just coming and they start provoking you just for no reason. How many of you have had such experience? Not in the church, just outside there in the world. Uh, let's be honest in the church. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, you're just seated there having your good time, enjoying your life at peace, you're calm, everything is okay. And then somebody just comes and provokes you. Because life is not just a straight line all the time. And the problems may come uninvited. Praise be the name of Jesus. One time I was traveling with a Dala Dala, going somewhere. Then I was seated at the, at the window seat. Then a certain lady came and then she seated just beside me. And this lady was talking through the phone so loud in a Dala Dala. You know, you, lady, you, you ladies understand when you're excited, yeah? You, understand, you know yourself. Yeah, you know, yes, it's, yeah, yeah, you go to that shop, it's very cheap, very loud. So loud to the extent that people became uncomfortable in that dollar dollar. The lady was just having her time, she's excited, she's happy. They are talking, they are having a conversation about a deal. And the bad thing is, we could hear both conversations from the lady and from the other side of the, from the other person who was talking through the phone. Then she was so loud in the dollar dollar. And then people started murmuring from the back. You, you understand? They started murmuring like, this is now disturbing, this is now too much. And the lady was talking through the phone, and then she turned, it's like she wanted to spot who is complaining. She turned, and then it's like she found nobody, and then she continued to talk. It's like nobody's business having a good time. And then the other lady from the back said, why is that brother not even speaking a word? You see, so I was, I was just having my times, my earphones on, somebody's having their time, and then somebody says, why is that brother seated next to her is not even saying a word? It's because problem can follow you even if you don't want them to follow you. <laughs> Hallelujah. So they want me to get into a conflict that I'm not even, it is not my business. Somebody is having their good time. 
because life is not a straight line. There are waves in life. You can be so careful, but because of the carelessness of other people, they also get you into trouble. One time I was driving, uh, this is Al Hassan Mwinyi Road, then I was uh, crossing the United Nations Road. Then suddenly when I was crossing, a border border came in front of me. Then I had to suddenly stop. And then when I stopped, also the border border stopped. And he came back to me and he started spitting some harsh words. But I'm the one who saved his life. Because if I was not careful, probably we could be speaking a different story. It's because problems can follow you even when they are not invited. Imagine if I was careless, then we could be speaking a different thing. You understand, you have been, you have been using Boda Boda. We are living with the, in the community, so we know these things. So we need the divine favor, the favor of the Lord to navigate through the problems of life. Praise Jesus. So the first point is I want to put an emphasis before we go back to the text. Life is hard. It is, it is not always a straight line. The second thing that I want you to note is life is moving very fast. Life is moving very fast. We are living in the world there. So many uh, things are coming from the technology. So many applications are coming. So many devices, high tech, whatever you can call them, are coming so rapidly. The technology is keeping on throwing things to us. So many are coming. Find someone is having like 10 uh, social media networking applications. You have Instagram, you have Twitter, you have uh, TikTok, you have uh, what? WeChat, you have, you find, you have like 10 of them and then all of them are saving a purpose of social networking. Few of them health, few of them business and all that. But what, what I want to say is life is moving very fast. Things are being invented day after day. And then we try also to keep up with what is happening in life. We try to remain relevant to the modern world. Try to remain and keep up with the speed at which things are happening. Because we are living in the world, we are not living in the church alone. But in the trying, in the, in the, in the efforts to try to remain relevant to the world, we don't want to lose our faith. We want to keep on maintaining our holy life and our spiritual life, despite that everything is happening so rapid and so fast, things are happening so fast. Praise be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, some... Uh, some of the people I know had like, let's say, iPhone 13, yeah? Hi, iPhone 13, and then you are looking them for money to buy iPhone 15, 14. Before you get the money, the moment you get the money for iPhone 14, here comes iPhone 15. Then you start again, because you are trying to be relevant to what is happening, you're trying to update yourself. The moment also you get money for iPhone 15, the guy will be standing again announcing, hey, here comes iPhone 16. You know, I was looking when they were launching these iPhones in, in, in Dubai. It's like people are rushing, people are struggling. Everyone wants to become like updated because life is, is, is like this, very fast. People are trembling on each other. Why? They are going to buy iPhone 15. And they were interviewing some of them and asking them, what is the lastest version of iPhone do you have? He said, iPhone 15, 14. And I was like, I have my iPhone 8 plus. I'm so outdated. 
And I was looking at me and they say like, um, <laughs> mm-hmm. I feel sorry for myself, but it's okay. As long as it saves the purpose, praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's put this into the social context. You know, there are some of us, let's say we are trying to keep up with the speed at, things, at which things are happening in our society. Let's say for ladies, you, you have been praying for uh, getting a marriage partner. Let's say for some time, you know, sometimes the ladies may, they may be praying, God, I want someone who is tall, you know, dark and handsome. They call it TDH. You ladies, we know our things. Lord, I'm praying for someone who is tall, someone who is dark and handsome. And then you wonder the people who keeps on coming to you. I didn't say that. <laughs> but the people who keeps on coming and you're wondering, you're looking around, you see other people are getting married, other people are starting business, other people are going to college, other people are traveling abroad, other people, life is like, and we're trying to keep up with that speed. It's only by the divine favor of the Lord that we are able to do that. Praise be the name of Jesus. The favor of the Lord will give you relevance regardless of what is happening in the life, in the society, or in the community. Praise be the name of Jesus. Now, coming back to the text that we have just read, we can see a story of a man. You know, I had to again do a little bit Bible study about that person, despite I, I, I have read about him and I know some of us also, many of us, I think all of us have read about Bart Myers and I had to go do a little bit of Bible study trying to do it retrospectively just to know if this man was born blind or he got his blindness along the journey of life. And I came to find that from many translations, the Bible says he regained his vision. He regained his sight. Some of the translations says he recovered his sight. So my question was around that probably this person had lost the sight along the journey. Somewhere, somewhere, somehow, some things happened. Because there's nowhere it says that he was born blind. But at least there is somewhere it says he recovered his sight. And now in the process of recovering his sight, we see that people, uh, Jesus was moving with a crowd in Jericho. And the guy was just seated there and he was given also a name, a beggar. And then Jesus was passing by. And then <laughs> this guy had an idea about Jesus. That's the first thing. He had an idea about Jesus because he called him Jesus, son of David. It means that he has heard about the story of Jesus somewhere. Now, to a big surprise, is that someone who is looking for his sight, the people around him are the ones blocking him from accessing what he wants to achieve in life. So the people around because in the first instance, he was calling Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the people tell him, hey, shut, shut up. 
Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Shut, shut up. Have you ever been in a situation where you are putting effort and then you find something is shutting you up, is blocking you from all the effort that you're putting? So I, I think this experience is so bad because somebody is in darkness, somebody is in need, somebody has lost sight. And then he is in the process of recovering his sight. And then the people around him, instead of helping him, are the ones who are blocking him in the first place. Now, there are people in our life who are called destiny helpers. There are different kinds of destiny helpers depending on different teaching, different people, different categorization. But we, let's see the five types, kinds, or categories of destiny helpers. The first category, we have people who are called the spiritual helpers or the ministers of God. These are the people like our, our pastors. They, uh, they point us to the right direction. They give us the spiritual um, um, uh, guidance in our lives. They are called destiny helpers. The ministers of God. The anointed of God. But we also have people who are called influential helpers. These are the people who are already successfully in the certain area of their life, in their expertise. And then you are also interested in the very same area. So once you get connected to these people, you are more likely to receive guidance from these people because they are already very successful in their area where they are working on. Let's say you want to become a musician and then you find someone who is already very ahead of you in the music industry. Then we have those who are called burden lifters. Some other people call them burden bearers. These are the people who will help you, especially in times of hardship, when you're sick, when you have debts, when you have whatever the challenges. These are the people who lift you from the problems that you might be facing you. They help, they help you uh, pull off some weight off your shoulder. They are called burden lifters. We have those people who are called uh, physical helpers. Most of the time they dedicate their time uh, and energy and material things to support you to your destiny. And then we have the last one who are called destiny connectors. These are the people who don't have anything Probably they don't have anything that relates to what you want, but they connect you to someone who has such thing that you want. Now, from this scenario here, we see that there are people, instead of becoming destiny connectors, they became destiny blockers, standing in the way of someone's destiny. Praise be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the destiny connectors, they connect you to someone who is already successful in the area that you want to also dive into. Praise be the name of Jesus. And then when you have these kinds of people, then they make your life a bit a bit soft, I can say, because you also need to put some efforts in. Because I said before, life is hard. But when we have these kinds of people, they smoothen the difficulty of life. So you have to watch the relationships that you have around you. Because for the case of Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus was surrounded by people, many people. 
I'm convinced that it is not only the people who were moving with Jesus from a different village. I think there were also people around the area where Bartimaeus was sitting. And so we expected, I expected that because they know the power of healing of Jesus, these people should make an effort, not only Bartimaeus, to connect him to Jesus. Because they know him, he has been blind for quite some time, he has been a beggar for quite some time, so we expect that his friends should take charge. When you read your Bible, there, there, are, two, there are other friends who were, other men who were friends was sick, paralyzed, and then they were trying to find a way to reach to Jesus, only to go through the roof. How many have read about that in the Bible? Yes. So they had to find a way to Jesus. Those are the divine connectors. They connect you to where you want to be. Praise be the name of Jesus. So we must look around our relationships. The kind of relationship that I can classify here that Bartimaeus had with some of the people is the kind of a relationship we call it the chameleon relationship. How many of us know the chameleon? I think some of them don't know. <laughs> the chameleon changes color depending on the environment. <coughs> when they go to those chairs, they will become red. When they come here at the altar, they become black. When they go to the stairs up there, they will become white. That's the kind of a chameleon kind of a relationship. So you change to feel validated to the environment. You change according to environment and context. We don't want to have such kinds of friends or relationship. They only scan the atmosphere, and then when they see that the atmosphere is relevant for them to behave, they behave according to that environment. Because if you examine these people in the first place, they were telling him, shut up. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Shut up. Then later on, call him. Oh, he's calling you. <laughs> he's calling you. They changed suddenly. The same people. Shut up. Right now, <laughs> he's calling you. He's calling. Because right now, it's look, it looks relevant to the context. You need to have friends who can be with you regardless of the context. And we, I know we have few. We cannot have all of them who will be ready to become committed to such extent. And it's okay because God will give you other friends who will be committed instead of having a chameleon relationship. You see and you act according to the relevance of the setting. Praise be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, the divine favor can give us an ability to navigate in all those circumstances that we have been just discussing here. The divine favor, the favor of the Lord will give you the ability to sustain those waves that are coming to you. One of the things that the divine favor can do is the divine favor can make you visible. Even if people try as much to put a blanket on you, to make you obscured, the divine favor will remove that obscurity.
Some of us have been working in different places, been working very hard, putting all the effort, working extra hours. And then at some point, you don't find the recognition or the, appreci the appreciation that you deserve. Putting all the work, doing everything it takes to make something stand out, putting the efforts like Bart Myers, but some people are trying to close, to put a blanket, to make you obscured. It's only by the divine favor of the Lord that we can become visible. I'm going to be mentioning them. The divine favor of the Lord will make you remembered. The divine favor of the Lord will make you remembered. I hope most of us have read a story of Samuel. He went to the house of Jesse. Reached there for a special assignment to anoint somebody who is going to become the king. Arriving there and then Jesse brings all the children, the sons that he had. Bringing them before Samuel. Here they are. You choose. These are the sons that I have. And Samuel was looking around to the sons. Mm, there, yeah, it's, he's your firstborn. Yes, I know. Don't you have another son? He said, you know, I have the other little boy. He's just roaming around there. You know, you know sometimes parents will be like, the last born will be like, call, call my sons or daughters and all the family members. And then the last born will be like roaming around there. Nobody even takes care of them. Be like, okay, let him have his time. You know, he's a kid. Just let him. Let him be. So it's like, Jesse was like, ah, he, he may not even be the one. Let him just be. Let him have his time. But someone said, we will not eat, neither shall we drink. Because he asked him, do you have another son? He said, yes, I have him. Where is he? Call him. Because we are not going to sit, not going to drink, not going to eat anything until he comes here. That is what the divine favor, the favor of the Lord can do to you. To make you remembered. Even if people are trying as much to forget about you, the divine favor will make you remembered. Maybe sitting somewhere and people are discussing issues, discussing promotion, discussing business. And then when your name goes there, some people will be like blocking it, rejecting it. But some God will raise someone who will say, we are not going to end this meeting until we decide about somebody. Praise be the name of Jesus. Favor can make you remembered. Favor will locate you. The divine favor of the Lord will locate you. You know, some may say, ah, you know, I was very far, you know. I live in a remote place. Nobody will be able to see me. Nobody will be able to. But the divine favor of the Lord will locate you wherever you are. Because we say the problems can come to you uninvited and they know your address. But the same applies to the favor of the Lord. It knows your address, exactly where you are. If you shift that location, you go to another place, that divine favor will be upon you. Praise be the name of Jesus. And then when we see from the Bible 
there is a minister who was called in the wilderness. John the Baptist. His ministry was in the wilderness. Now, pick somebody today in the modern world. Tell them to go start a ministry in Somalia. Somewhere where there's no, no people who are there. It's going to be very tough. And in this, uh, for this man in this ministry, people followed him in the wilderness. They were able to chart their way to the wilderness because they are following not just a person, the ministry that is upon him, the favor of the Lord that is upon him. So my brother, my sisters, regardless of your, of your location, the divine favor of the Lord will locate you. It will have an address of where you are. Praise be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes we are, we, we are, we are scared. It is difficult. Especially starting, a, let's say, a ministry somewhere away from the environment where you're used to. Last Sunday, I was listening from Pastor Kabongo here, starting the ministry in Kinshasa. And then I started meditating about other people who were called to start ministries, even in the areas you cannot even expect people to agree. And they accepted. And some of the ministry are, have grown so big. Because the divine favor of the Lord will have your address. Wherever you go, it will follow you. The divine favor of God will be upon you. Praise be the name of Jesus. The divine favor will break limitations. The limitation will be broken. We see for... Bartimaeus, the vision was the limitation. And this is the one that kept him begging. Because we see, after the story, the Bible says he then started following Jesus. Have you ever joined yourself in a business that you don't know where it is going? You don't know where, you don't know nothing about it. But because he is already Received sight. He said, wherever you are going, regardless, I'm going with you. Have you ever been met such a person who is ready to, because he's already liberated from something bigger than what he's about to pursue? He decided, I'm just going to go with you, regardless. I don't know what you're going to do. I know you're just moving from village to village. Okay, I'm just going to join you. Praise be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The divine favor will raise someone to speak for you, to speak on your behalf. There are certain places you cannot go and speak by yourself. God has a tendency of raising people who will be speaking on your behalf or who will be on your side. Some instance, Paul was supposed to go for preaching and he was scared to stay in the town, in one of the towns. And then he received the word from the Lord. He said, don't you worry because I have so many people in this place. Don't be scared because I've already put everything straight for you. Praise be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So there are some areas where if you speak for yourself, some other people might not even listen from you. You know, there are some areas 
today, if you go there and you introduce yourself, I'm coming from City Christian Center where Pastor Monsele is ministering there. Then some people will be, oh, <laughs> welcome. How is Dr. Monsele doing? Pastor Monsele doing? Because God has put people for you. People who are going to speak for you. People who are going to defend you. People who are not going to shut you up, but to call you. Praise be the name of Jesus. And the last one, the divine favor will open doors for you. The divine favor will open doors for you. The favor of the Lord will open doors for you. You know, there are some places where you go and you're struggling so much. Maybe it's a job. It's a school you want to take your kids to. It's a place you want to apply for whatever, volunteering. It's a door that has been closed. There are some doors that open only not because we deserve, but because of the favor of the Lord. Because of the divine favor of the Lord. You know, some doors you cannot open by yourself. There are some places we cannot get access into by ourselves. It's only by the favor of the Lord. Hallelujah. When other people are complaining about the difficulties, and you know that you have prayed for the favor of God, you don't want to join them in their complaint because you know favor is working on your side. Praise be the name of Jesus. Shall we stand? The divine favor, I've tried to summarize because I know our time is also rushing. A favor that God has released unto you. And you want to be ready to connect with that. When we were starting, I said we have the people who are called destiny helpers. They assist you to achieve your destiny. They give you some energy. They catapult you towards your destiny. And you want to pray for God to give us those kinds of people. But when we are praying for God to give us those kinds of people, we also should be those kinds of people. People who are also connecting others to opportunities. People who are ready to defend others. Because I believe what you have been praying for, if you give, it shall be given back unto you. Multiplied. So if we are praying for destiny helpers this morning, pray to God also, he make you one of the destiny helpers for other people. And you don't have to be very far ahead in your life. Maybe you're already having a career, let's say in law, in medicine. Find somebody in college, start mentoring them up. You don't have to be having a career. Now you're in college. Find someone from secondary school. They're here. Hold their hands. Connect them to opportunities. Tell them what is the best to be done. Maybe you're in secondary. You have your younger brother in primary school. When you get some time, talk to them. Tell them how it is good to be educated. You will have planted a seed that you will remember, they will remember for all their life. I remember for me, it was just a single word from one person who was a doctor. It's called it Dr. Eric. I was being operated here. If you can look behind my neck. That time I didn't have anything to do with medicine. 
If somebody would ask me, who do you want to be when you grow up? I said, I want to work with Tanesco. By that time, it was a fancy thing. <laughs> because when you see light coming in your home, you find it so nice. I said, what do you want to be? I, I used to love those people when they climb those, uh, whatever they call, at the top there, doing their electrical, whatever. Then I was like, what, who do you want to be when you grow up? I wanted to work with Tanesco. I loved them so much. Then one time when I got sick, I was in a, in, in a very hard time. I had some sort of, I'm trying to find a simple term. It's like a tumor, maybe. If you say tumor, it's going to be sound like some sort of, but it was a swelling. A big swelling that was filled with pus. I didn't know where it, was, it came from. Then I went to hospital. I couldn't turn my neck. Because if I want to talk to somebody, I have to turn like this and go back to this. Because I couldn't do this. And I was in a very serious pain. Very painful. I know most of us, all of us have been through pain and you understand, so it was very painful. And then this doctor, he came, he relieved me from the pain and I said, forget about Tanesco. Forget about it. From that time I said, I want to become a doctor because I want to relieve people from pain like this. And the good thing is, he was, when he was operating on me, I was conscious. And he, was, he would be asking, yeah, hey, young man, where do you go to school? I would be responding, oh, who do you want to be? You want to be Tanesco? Ha ha, oh wow, that's good, very good. But when I woke up from that bed, I said, no, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to become somebody. That person changed my life until today. It's a decision that I made, but he was, he was a connection to what I am today. Praise be the name of Jesus. So when you are praying for your divine help, a divine helper, pray that you become somebody who is ready to raise other people, to connect other people to opportunities, who is ready to provide free guidance. Right now, people are very hard to give their free Guidance, free volunteering. When you call them, please, can you do this volunteering? And they'll be like, <laughs> how much are you going to pay? Anyway, that is the lesson for a different day. But when you are investing in other people, that investment is going to come back to you multiplied. Praise be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So before we go into prayer, because I've already said, pray for a destiny helper and pray you to become a destiny helper for somebody. Someone I believe, someone is going to come to you asking for assistance and you have to be in position to assist that person. Praise be the name of Jesus. Assist them to the extent that you are capable, not in the area where you are incompetent or you are not capable. And before we go for that, because I want us to pray all of us, I want to call for somebody who has not received Jesus to be their Lord and Savior. Because I, I, I believe this only works when we receive Jesus to become our Lord and Savior. This is applicable only when you are already in the kingdom of God. So I want to call people. If there is anyone who says, I want to change the way I used to live before. We just have one minute, and then after that, we are going to pray. So if you are here, and you say, God, I want to receive you. I want to receive Jesus this morning. If you are here, I would love to invite you. If you are here, I would love to invite you. You're saying, I have been living my life the way I wanted to live, doing the thing that I want to do, and nobody questioned me. But right now, I want to subscribe into the kingdom of God. If you are here... I would love to invite you to the front, and then we are going to pray together.
So I believe all of us have received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. If that is the case, shall we clap to Jesus? Amen. Now I want us to pray for people who want to become destiny helpers and they want to receive destiny help. You can come in front if you feel like it's good, but because I know we are praying at the whole church, it's okay, but you can come in front as well. We want to pray for our destiny helpers. And this is the only time you can raise up your voice. Just like Bartimaeus, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus can get into prayer now. Can get into prayer now. Jesus, son of David. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, I've been blind, been lost. I didn't know where to go. I didn't have good friends. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. I've been meeting people who are blocking me instead of helping me. People who are speaking my name, but not in a good will. People who are not mentioning my name. Once they see it, they block it. Jesus, son of David, I ask for your favor. In the name of Jesus, I ask for your favor. In the name of Jesus, I ask for your favor. In the name of Jesus, give me the ability, O oh God. Labo Sariamanda Rabasa, Kashamande Bosayamanda. Jesus, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. I am lost. Didn't know. I know there are people standing on my way. God, I don't want to pray that you destroy them, but I pray that you change them. The people that I'm working with, oh Lord, they are becoming destiny blockers in my life. Lord, I don't pray that you destroy them, but I pray that you change them for the better. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that God, you connect me with somebody who is already ahead of me in my profession. God, I pray that you connect me with somebody who is already doing good in the ministry, that I can learn from them, oh God, because I know you can put people just like the way you put Paul. God, I know you're going to bring people on my way who are going to become the poor of my life, who are going to become the guidance, oh Lord. Lord, I know your anointing is going to locate me wherever I am. Your divine favor is going to locate me. Your divine favor is going to locate my children. Your divine favor is locating, is going to locate my husband. Your divine favor is going to locate my wife. I may not know where they are right now, but God, I know that you know where they are. Lord, I know distance is not a barrier to you. Wherever they are, oh God, I send your angels. I send your divine favor to them. In the name of Jesus, I send your divine favor to my children. In the name of Jesus, I send your divine favor to my husband. In the name of Jesus. Shamandere bosa yamanda, reposa yamanda rabaseko, rapaseke shandarabase. Lord, you say that 
the world, the earth is your footstool. You know everywhere, oh Lord. There's nothing like a, a remote place, oh Jesus. You know the wilderness. You know the towns. You know the villages. You know every place, oh God. And I'm going to send your divine favor, oh Lord, in those places where your people are located. Those who are watching online, wherever they are, oh Lord, we are sending your divine favor in the name of Jesus for whatever they have been praying for. Lord, the breakthrough is coming. Use your voice. Say it before Jesus. Shout before Jesus. Don't be shy because your neighbor is looking at you. That is not your business. Keep, keep speaking to Jesus. Keep asking Jesus. Have mercy on my life. Bring somebody my way. Make me become somebody that I can, I can lead others. I can become a helper to others. In the name of Jesus. Keep praying. Keep praying. Shout. This is the time. This is the time. You have been in obscurity for a long time. You have been obscured for a long time. Lord is going to remove the obscurity in your life. In the name of Jesus, I don't know what you're praying for, but I know God is going to remove the obscurity in your life. You are going to become visible from today. In the name of Jesus. Keep on praying. Keep on asking Jesus. Keep on asking Jesus. Have mercy on my life. Have mercy on me, oh Jesus. I want to get my divine helpers. I want to get somebody who can lead my ways, can show me the way. In the name of Jesus. I want to become somebody who can lead other people. Show other people the way. In the name of Jesus. Ramande rebo sa yamanda rabaseke. Rebo sa yamanda rabaseke. We have one more minute to pray. We have one more minute to pray. Something is breaking forth in this place. In the name of Jesus. One more minute of prayer. And something is breaking. Breaking forth in the name of Jesus. The limitation is going to be destroyed. In the mighty name of Jesus. Ramande rebo saka. Keep on praying. Keep on asking Jesus. Keep on praying. Keep on asking Jesus. Repose, Sayamanda Rabaseke. I want to thank God for the wonderful time. God, I want to thank you because you're going to become my help, my number one help. And then you're going to provide destiny helpers for my life in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus hallelujah I want you once you start once you walk out of this service this morning start walking like someone who has a divine favor of the Lord Walk like you have it. Hallelujah. Woo. When you talk, talk like somebody, you have it. I feel like saying something, but the time is already over. <laughs> Walk like you have it. You have got it already. In the name of Jesus. When they ask you, just tell them it's the divine favor of the Lord. God is going to raise people from the places you did not expect. Shall we give God a big praise? Hallelujah.
put your hands together for the Lord. May the Lord connect us with the right people. And may you be the one. Amen.